Well, hey, good morning, family of grace. Welcome to our online campus. I'm so glad to be here worshiping with you. If you don't know me, my name is Pastor Chris, and I'm our online campus pastor here at Grace Central Coast. And uh, we've got an exciting morning together today where we're going to hear from God's Word. We're actually going to take a moment to renew our church covenant together. Um, So if you're a covenant member, it's an exciting time. And if you're not, it's an exciting time as well because you get to hear our covenant Um, as we start off the new year. And so I'm excited to worship with you in that unique way today. But before then, we're going to jump in to a time of worship through music. And so I encourage you, uh, take this moment, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, um, we're going to read with and to each other God's word. I want you to take a moment to uh, reorient your heart posture, to intentionally set your heart and your mind on the Lord right now as we respond to who he is by worshiping him. So let's read together from the Psalms. Let's worship together. This psalm is picked specifically today, thinking about the new year. In Psalm 105, it says this. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever, the word that he commanded for a thousand generations. Let's praise him now. Together, come that fount. Come that fount of every blessing to my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing. Offer songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melody song.
As we enter a new year, together as a church family, we believe that you are altogether good. You are for us. You love us. You are bigger than our fears. You are bigger than our failures and our mistakes. You have a plan. And so we trust you. We pray that you would continue to make your plan known to us so we can um, live like you and respond to you in worship. We pray these things for your glory. Amen.
Well, good morning, Grace Central Coast, and Happy New Year. It's a joy to be worshiping online with you today on this first day of 2023. My name is Jess Jantos. I'm the Women's Care Director here at Grace. And if you're new here, um, this is a, just a time for you to get to know different ministries within our church. But if you call Grace Central Coast your church home, there are two easy ways to give back, and you can find those on the screen. So today we're going to be talking about covenant membership and the idea of being committed and involved in our church. We see this as another way to be known within our church community. And it's we see this all throughout the Bible of taking a covenant um, with the Lord and making promises to be involved and committed. And so um, even though we recognize that the local church is not perfect and it's made up of broken people, we see this as um, really God's plan for his people to be involved in the local church. And so we want to tell you that our next covenant membership class is going to be on January 28. It's at our Five Cities campus, but it's for people who attend any of our um, campuses. And it's a time to meet with our pastoral staff um, to review and learn about some of the doctrine that Grace Central Coast teaches and believes. Um, there will be a time of question and answer. And then the final step in that process is to have a get to know you conversation with a member of our staff. And I love this time because it gives me an opportunity to get to know um, better other people within our church and maybe someone that even attends a different campus than what I normally attend. And so we really want to encourage you, whether you're brand new to our church and ready to take this next step, or you've been attending for a long time and been thinking thinking about this, let's join in committing together to Grace Central Coast this month. And so as we think about that and we think about the rest of our service, um, would you join me in prayer? Lord, we thank you that your plan is for us to be committed to one another, to stand beside each other and do life together. Um, I love our church community here at Grace Central Coast, and I just pray that we would take that next step to lean in and commit um, this month, Lord. And as we begin this new year, we just pray for all that comes along with it. Um, we pray that you would bless this year, help us keep our eyes focused on you, grow our faith, Lord, we pray for the rest of this service as Pastor Tim opens your word and challenges us um, with a New Year's message, Lord, and we just pray that you would um, speak through him, give us ears to hear, Lord. We pray for this time in your name. Amen. So our scripture reading today is going to be from 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 34. And so we'll start in 2 Chronicles 34 verses 1 through 3. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. And he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, and walked in the ways of David his father. And he did not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. For in the eighth year of his reign, while he was yet a boy, he began to seek the God of David his father. And in the twelfth year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem of the high places, the ashram and the carved and the metal images. Now verse 8. Now in the eighteenth year of his reign, when he had cleansed the land and the house, he sent Shapham, the son of Azalea, and Messiah, the governor of the city, and Joah, the son of Joaz, the recorder, to repair the house of the Lord his God. Now verses 18 through 21. Then Shapham the secretary told the king, Hilkiah the priest has given me a book, and Shapham read from it before the king. And when the king heard the words of the law, he tore his clothes. And the king commanded Hilkiah, Achim the son of Shapham, Abdon the son of Micah, Shapham the secretary, and Isaiah the king's servant, saying, Go, inquire of the Lord for me and those who are left in Israel and in Judah concerning the words of this book that has been found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is poured out on us, because our fathers have not kept the word of the Lord to do according to all that is written in this book. Now verse 24 through the end of the chapter. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will bring disaster upon this place and upon its inhabitants, all the curses that are written in the book that was read before the king of Judah, because they have forsaken me and have made offerings to other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore, my wrath will be poured out on this place and will not be quenched. But to the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, thus shall you say to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, regarding the words that you have heard, because your heart was tender and you humbled yourself before God when you heard his words against this place and its inhabitants, and you humbled yourself before me and have torn your clothes and wept before me, 
I also have heard you, declares the Lord. Behold, I will gather you to your fathers, and you shall be gathered to your grave in peace, and your eyes shall not see all the disaster that I will bring upon this place and its inhabitants. And they brought back word to the king. Then the king sent and gathered together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem, and the king went up to the house of the Lord with all the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and the priests and the Levites, all the people, both great and small. And he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant that had been found in the house of the Lord. And the king stood in his place and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and all his soul to perform the words of the covenant that were written in this book. Then he made all who were present in Jerusalem and in Benjamin join in. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem did according to the covenant of God, the God of their fathers. And Josiah took away all the abominations from the territory that belonged to the people of Israel and made all who were present in Israel serve the Lord their God. All his days they did not turn away from following the Lord, the God of their fathers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, hey, Happy New Year. Can you believe it? Today is the first day of the year 2023. Absolutely crazy. I'm Tim Thule, and I'm the lead teaching pastor here at Grace. Thanks for worshiping with us at our campuses in North County, downtown Slo, the five cities, and online. I know, you could be a thousand other places today, but you've chosen to be here with us, and we're so glad. It's a family worship Sunday across our church, which means we've got lots of young people in our services today, and you guys are such an important part of our church family. We're so glad that you're here. Today's message is a message for you. I've thought about you as I've prepared, and I believe that God has a challenge for you today. So listen up. It wasn't too long ago that one of my kids asked, hey, Dad, what's your favorite holiday? And she asked it with a bit of a smile on her face because I think she knew my answer. New Year's is my favorite holiday. Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Easter are amazing for obvious reasons, but I love New Year's because it's the first day of a new year, the first day of the rest of my life. New Year's is a fresh start. All the slates are wiped clean. It's a new beginning. New Year's is a chance to begin again and hit the reset button in our lives. My kids think that's so funny, that dad's favorite holiday is New Year's because my kids know me. They know that I love setting goals and making new commitments. What about you? For many years here at Grace, I used to take the first Sunday of January off because I was always a little tired from the Christmas crunch and I needed a break. But then one year, for some reason, I didn't take the first Sunday of January off and I realized that year how fun it is to preach the first Sunday of a new year. Now, now I never take this Sunday off. I never miss the opportunity to bring a challenge to the family of Grace on New Year's Sunday. I love it. And I'm excited about the chance to do that again today on this New Year Sunday of 2023. So as I sought the Lord, I sensed the Lord moving me to challenge our church around the idea of covenant renewal, renewing our spiritual commitments as we head into a new year, our covenant commitments to live before the Lord and with one another in biblical ways. Sadly, the American church today doesn't talk about covenants and covenant commitments very often anymore, and I think that's a shame because it's an important practice. It's an important pattern that we see across the Bible, communities of God's people making and or renewing their covenant commitments, their spiritual commitments before the Lord. And one of the many places we see the practice of covenant renewal is right here in the passage we just read together, 2 Chronicles 34. It's the story of the boy king Josiah, and it's a story that I love. It's a story that has meant a lot to me across the years. It's a thought-provoking story full of truth and challenge for our lives today on this first Sunday of 2023. So if you haven't yet, would you please open a Bible with me to 2 Chronicles 34, grab that outline in your worship folder and take some notes today. 
We believe, we always say it, that if you write something down, you're going to get more out of today's message. You're going to rem- think about it deeper and you're going to remember it longer if you take some notes. Today, I want to share four challenging truths from the story of Josiah. These are truths that are challenging me as I step into a new year and truths that I think will challenge you too. So are you ready to go? Truth number one pops from the page in the first three verses of the chapter. Second Chronicles chapter 34, verse one. Would you look at it with me? Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. And he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and walked in the ways of David his father and he did not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. For in the eighth year of his reign, while he was yet a boy, he began to seek the God of David his father. And in the twelfth year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem of the high places, the Asherim, and the carved and the metal images. Well, did you catch it? Josiah was crowned king when he was just eight years old. And Josiah did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. He did not turn aside to the right or to the left. The text says, for because in the eighth year of his reign, while he was yet a boy, which means Josiah was 16 years old, Josiah begins to seek the God of his father, the God of David, his father. So here's truth number one. You and I, we are never too young to seek the Lord, and it's never too late. This is a New Year's challenge for our grace kids, our grace youth who are with us in today's message. God's word is speaking to you today. Now is the time to seek the Lord. Young people, you aren't too young to make your faith your own and to say to God, I want to know you. I'm going to seek you with all that I am. I'm all in. Show me who you are. Teach me your ways, God. You don't have to wait until you get married or have your own kids. You don't have to graduate from college. You don't have to wait until you graduate from high school or graduate from middle school. You can seek the Lord right now. The story of Josiah teaches us that we're never too young to seek the Lord. David said to his son Solomon, who would be king after him, Now you, Solomon, my son, know the God of your father and serve him with a whole heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands every plan and thought. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. Those words are both a promise and a warning to Solomon and to the line of kings who will come after him. They are a promise and a warning to us. Well, the sad history of Israel reveals that very few kings of Israel and Judah heeded those words. So few set their hearts to seek the Lord. But Josiah, young Josiah, was one king who did. And the Lord was found by Josiah. The Lord showed up in Josiah's life. The Lord blessed Josiah. Young people, what about you? What about you today? You are not too young. Don't wait. Seek the Lord now. And you will save yourself so much striving, so much pain, and so much heartache. Seek the Lord in 2023, and he will let you find him. We are never too young to seek the Lord, and it's never too late. Josiah teaches us that we're never too young to seek the Lord. But how do we know that it's never too late? Maybe you're here today and you wonder if it's too late for you because you know who you are and because you know what you've done. After all, the Lord warns that when we forsake him, he will cast us off forever. Doesn't that mean it's sometimes too late? Well, it's not the story of Josiah that teaches us that it's never too late. It's actually the story of Josiah's grandfather, Manasseh, that teaches us that it's never too late. Well, it turns out that Manasseh, Josiah's grandfather, was the wickedest king in all Judah's history. So turn with me two chapters back to 2 Chronicles uh, 33. I guess it's just one chapter back. And look with me at verse 9. Here's what it says. 
It says, Manasseh led Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem astray to do more evil than the nations whom the Lord destroyed before the people of Israel. The Lord spoke to Manasseh and to his people, but they paid no attention. Well, look at what happens next in verse 11. Therefore, the Lord brought upon them the, com the commanders of the army of the king of Assyria who captured Manasseh with hooks and bound him with chains of bronze and brought him to Babylon. And when he was in distress, he entreated the favor of the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. He prayed to him and God was moved by his entreaty and heard his plea and brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord was God. Did you catch it? Despite his great and long wickedness, it still wasn't too late for Manasseh. And it's not too late for you today, no matter what you've done. One day, the day you die, it will be too, too late. But it's not too late today. If you will humble yourself before the Lord and cry out to him, the Lord will hear and answer and forgive your sins and he will let you find him. Truth number one, we're never too late to seek the Lord. We're never too young to seek the Lord and it's never too late. Truth number two is found in all the time markers in Josiah's story. Did you catch them? Verse one, Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign. Verse three, in the eighth year of his reign, Josiah began to seek the Lord. Verse three, also, in the twelfth year of his reign, Josiah began to purge Judah and Jerusalem of all the high places. He tore down and destroyed the idols. Verse eight, in the eighteenth year of his reign, Josiah begins to repair the house of the Lord, the temple. In that same year, he reinstitutes the Passover feast. What does this mean? It means that Josiah was growing in his faith. Josiah was growing in his knowledge and understanding of who God is and what God desires and what it means to walk with God. His growing understanding of God led him to more and more action, more and more application in response to God, more and more obedience. So here's truth number two. Our relationship with God should dynamically grow and progress across our years. Like any relationship, a relationship with God is a dynamic thing. It's not static or fixed. A relationship with God is not set it and forget it. Any more than a marriage is a set it and forget it thing. We too should grow in our knowledge and understanding of who God is over time, what he desires, and what it means to live for him. So how is your relationship with God different than it was a year ago? How is it different than it was 10 years ago? It should be different. What new obedience, what new actions are you taking in response to a growing knowledge of who God is and what God desires? I was reflecting this week, my relationship with God is very different than it was 20 years ago when I first came to Grace Central Coast because I've seen God work in so many dramatic and profound ways. I've had the joy of spending so much time studying God's word. My knowledge and understanding of God has grown so much. I've tasted and seen that the Lord is good. I've tasted and seen over time. My faith has grown as I've experienced God's faithfulness again and again in our family and here in our church. I'm a different person. Can you see the same in your life? Can you say the same? If your relationship with God isn't any different now than it was 10 years ago, I'd say that's a problem that needs to be looked at as we step into 2023. This is an opportunity to reflect and stay, take stock. If you're stuck in your relationship with God right now, it's time to rouse yourself. It's time to seek the Lord and cry out to him and ask him, get me unstuck. 
It's time to mix it up and try new things and make a plan and take new action in your relationship with God. I don't know if you're aware, one of the battle cries that emerged out of the Protestant Reformation was Semper Reformanda. It it means always reforming. It was the conviction that the Reformation is really never over. The church should always be reforming itself in light of the Bible, in light of Scripture, and a growing knowledge and understanding of who God is and what God desires. And what is true for the church should also be true of our lives too. We should be always reforming. This is what we see in Josiah's life. He was always personally reforming across his years. And so he was always leading the nation to be always reforming. In fact, what we really see in Josiah's life is always repenting and reforming. Because 2 Chronicles 34 records that when Josiah's workers in the 18th year of his reign begin to repair the house of the Lord, the temple, something happens. They find in the temple the book of the law, the book of Moses, the Pentateuch. What this means is that somehow over the long years of spiritual drift and rebellion, the book of the law had been so neglected that no one even knew anymore what the book was about. It was lost to their understanding. Or it means that the book of the law had not just been neglected, but had been actually utterly and completely lost altogether, misplaced, shoved into a storage box someplace. Either way, this is wild to think about. It would be like our church neglecting and utterly losing the Bible in our life together. Can you imagine? It speaks to the sad spiritual state of Israel at this time. Either way, one of the workers finds the book of the law. They bring it to Josiah. They read the book of the law to the king. And then we see his reaction in verse 19. Back to chapter 34, verse 19. And when the king heard the words of the law, he tore his clothes. And the king commanded Hilkiah, Ahiakim, the son of Shaphan, and Abdon, the son of Micah, Shaphan, the secretary, and Asiah, the king's servant, saying, Go, inquire of the Lord for me. And for those who are left in Israel and in Judah, concerning the words of this book that has been found, for great is the wrath of the Lord that is poured out on us, because our fathers have not kept the word of the Lord to do according to all that is written in this book. Do you see, Josiah repents when he hears the word of the Lord. And so he goes and he consults the Lord through the prophetess Hilkiah. Hilkiah is consulted, and she confirms Josiah's fears. The wrath of God is surely coming. Judgment is coming upon the nation of Judah for their rebellion and for the years that they have forsaken the Lord. But not yet. Not yet is God's judgment coming. Because of Josiah's repentance, look at verse 26. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, regarding the words that you have heard, because your heart was tender and you humbled yourself before God when you heard his words against this place and its inhabitants, and you have humbled yourself before me and have torn your clothes and you've wept before me, I also have heard you declares the Lord. Behold, I will gather you to your fathers and you should be gathered to your grave in peace. And your eyes shall not see all the disaster that I will bring upon this place and its inhabitants. And they brought word back to the king. And now we've come to truth number three. God is opposed to the proud, but he gives grace to those who humble themselves before God in response to his word. Because your heart was tender, Josiah, and you humbled yourself before God when you heard my words, I have also heard you, declares the Lord. You will not see all the disaster that I will bring upon this place. God forestalls and suspends his judgment in response to Josiah's tender and humble heart. Do you see God's grace flows in response to our repentance, our humble brokenness, when our hearts are tender, before him. 
there is nothing more delightful in the sight of God than our repentance and dependence. We see it in the story of wicked Manasseh. We see it in the story of Josiah. We see it across the Bible story. It's the story of Israel, repeated again and again and again. Spiritual drift and rebellion, idolatry, then finally repentance. Then God's gracious restoration. That's the cycle again and again and again across the Bible. But it's not just Israel. It's us too in big and small ways. It's us too. Can't you see? Is your heart tender and humble before the Lord on this first day of 2023? It's what the Lord desires and delights in more than anything else. Have you been running from the Lord? Have you been forsaking the Lord, even perhaps in your heart? Do you need to tear some clothes today in humble repentance before the Lord. I say to you, do it. Don't wait. It's what the Lord desires and delights in more than anything else. And it's our humble repentance that uncorks the fountain of God's grace like nothing else. Because of the Lord's compassion, we are not consumed. His mercies are new every morning. And on this first morning of 2023, Use this New Year year Sunday as a day of repentance, a day to seek the Lord, a day to set your heart to seek him. Whatever you do, don't waste this day. Don't squander it. Josiah didn't squander or waste his day. For look at what he does next. He gathers the elders and all the people, and he himself takes up the book of the law and reads it to to Judah and to Israel. And then verse 31, and the king stood in his place and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and all his soul to perform the words of the covenant that were written in this book. Then he made all who were present in Jerusalem and in Benjamin join in it. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem did according to the covenant of God, the God of their fathers. And Josiah took away all the abominations from all the territory that belonged to the people of Israel and made all who were present in Israel serve the Lord their God all his days. They did not turn away from following the Lord, the God of their fathers." Here it is. Here's that biblical practice and pattern that we noted earlier. Covenant renewal. Josiah makes a covenant before God. He makes a relational commitment, a commitment to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments with all his heart and soul. And then he leads the people into the same covenant commitment before God. Do you remember... When Joshua, way back before Josiah, when Joshua speaks these famous words that we all know, Joshua says this, Choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your fathers served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Do you know what is happening When Joshua speaks these words, do you know the context? Joshua is leading his generation in covenant renewal as they enter the promised land. He's challenging them, his community, to make a fresh commitment to serve the Lord and seek the Lord. Josiah is doing the exact same thing generations later, but with his community. This is the biblical practice and pattern of covenant renewal, and it's truth number four today. God is pleased when we make and renew covenant commitments to live for him with others. God is pleased with covenant commitment. We know this pleases God because God records the covenant commitments of his people again and again and again across his word, the Bible. 
He's calling our attention to these occasions when his people make covenant commitments before him. He celebrates the covenant commitments of his people so that we see these occasions. And we see also the power of covenant commitments in the postscript at the end of the chapter. Did you catch it? Middle of verse 32. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem did according to the covenant of God, the God of their fathers. And Josiah took away all the abominations, all the territory that belonged to the people of Israel and made all who were present in Israel serve the Lord their God. Here it is. All his days, they did not turn away from following the Lord, the God of their fathers. That's the power of covenant commitment. Covenant commitments have the power to arrest spiritual drift in our lives. Covenant commitments provide guardrails and tracks for us to run on in our lives. Covenant commitments shape our character and set the course of our lives. Covenant commitments, they lock things down in our lives and they make things non-negotiable. Think about it. It's the whole point of a marriage ceremony. A husband and wife stand before everyone who's important to them and they speak vows and make promises to love one another. They are making a covenant commitment to love one another for a lifetime. They're binding their hearts to those promises and to that other person. They know that covenant commitments, we know that covenant commitments are not ironclad guarantees They can be broken, and people break them all the time, but still they're powerful. Still they're powerful, especially when we remember them and renew them regularly. And that's what I want to challenge us to on this New Year's Sunday. On this first day of 2023, as Joshua challenged his community, and as Josiah challenged his community, I want to challenge us, our community, to make and or renew our covenant commitment to the Lord in five areas. I'm going to quickly highlight the five areas, and then our next step this week is going to encourage you to flesh out these commitments with some more specifics and bullet points today. All right? So here they are. Five areas of covenant commitment. The first, make or renew a covenant commitment to trust and follow Jesus in 2023. Remember the song, I have decided to follow Jesus. Make a decision to follow Jesus in 2023 and don't turn back. How will you do that? What will that practically look like for you in your life? Think in terms of your time, your energy, your talents, your treasure. Think of books that you might read, rhythms of grace that we talked about last summer that you will endeavor, you will make a commitment to practice in 2023. Make a covenant commitment to trust and follow Jesus. Second, make or renew a covenant commitment to live for the disciple-making mission of Jesus, to help others find and follow him. This year, make Jesus' mission your mission. What will that look like for you in 2023? Who is far from God in your circle of influence that you will pray for this next year? How, who will you invest and spend time with this year to help them find and follow Jesus? How will you link and connect your life to the mission of Jesus this year? How are you going to help people find and follow Jesus in a practical way this year? Third, if you're married, make or renew a covenant commitment to a gospel-centered marriage marked by humble sacrificial love. Make a commitment for this next year. Make a commitment to invest in your marriage in 2023. How will you do that? Susie and I, we are committed to our date nights, and we're committed in 2023 to a quarterly getaway, one night a quarter at least, 
where we get away together. We're in a stage of life where we can pull that off. You may not be. We're committed to other things in 2023, to invest in our marriage. How are you going to invest in a gospel-centered marriage this next year? And we've got a great opportunity coming up here in January where we're going to help you do that. It's what we're calling our Homegrown Marriage and Family Conference with our good friends Paul and Virginia Friesen. These have been mentors in Susie and Mai's life, and we're so excited that they're going to come to Grace again to share their heart and biblical principles to help us invest in our marriages in 2023. This is happening January 20 and 21. It's coming up soon. You can uh, really register for the conference on our website. We want to encourage you to do that. Make a commitment to be there at Homegrown in just a few weeks. Fourth, Make or renew a covenant commitment to a gospel-centered home, leading your family or your household in the word and ways of the Lord this next year. By the way, you don't have to be married for this one. That's why I phrased it the way I did. Everyone lives somewhere. You may live with roommates. This is applicable for you. How will you spiritually lead and influence in that living setting where God has placed you? How will you initiate spiritual conversations and prayer with those whom you live with? How will you encourage? How will you serve? How will you bless that home and those people in 2023? Finally, number five, make or renew a covenant commitment right here to this church family, Grace Central Coast, loving and serving others in the body of Christ. Make a commitment in 2023 to be here in worship every Sunday that you can be this next year. Make a commitment to show up at your growth group, to love and live life with those people whom God has placed in your life. Find a place to serve here in our church. Make a commitment to tithe here in our church. Make these, these people around you, make them your peeps, your community in 2023. Become a covenant member in 2023. Make a concrete commitment to this church family. Speaking of covenant membership, did you know that our covenant membership involves the signing of our Grace Central Coast Covenant? Today, you can find a copy of that covenant on the back of your worship folder. Here at Grace, we're committed to regularly remembering and renewing our Grace Central Coast Covenant together. And the way we do that is by reciting our Grace Central Coast Covenant together. It's been a while since we've done this, but today is a perfect opportunity. And so we're going to stand and we're going to do that. We're going to read through and renew our covenant together as a church family immediately after we pray. If you're here today and you're not a covenant member, we want to invite you to join in, to stand and read along with us. Or you can just stand, watch, and listen. We're so glad that you're here, and we hope that this makes you curious about covenant membership here at Grace. Okay, so five areas of, uh, where we're challenging you, just like Joshua challenged, just like Josiah challenged, I'm challenging you today, five areas where you, where we together can make a covenant, where we can renew a covenant commitment to the Lord as we head into the new year. All right? There you have it. Let's do it, and let's pray together. Lord, what a challenge. What a challenge we found here in 2 Chronicles 34 in the life of the boy king, Josiah. So much here for us. Thanks for uh, the reminder, the challenge today that this, the first day of a new year, it's just such an opportunity to renew our covenant commitments with you. And so uh, even right now, we just take a couple minutes of quiet to look over that list of five areas once more to begin to process. We're not finished. We're just starting the process of what does this look like in our lives? Am I ready to say, I'm deciding this year to follow Jesus? And so meet us in this quiet for just a couple of minutes.
Lord, what a joy it is for me to be a part of this church family. Thanks for these brothers and sisters. Thanks for all that you're doing among us. We give you great praise and glory for that. You've been so faithful to us. And because you have, we're just challenged to step into a new year and to trust and to follow you, Lord Jesus. Would you help us? We thank you that your mercies are new every morning. We thank you that this year is a fresh start. You give us the grace of a fresh start, a new beginning. And so we just want to step into that opportunity today. Would you help us? Again, this isn't the end. This is the beginning. Would you meet your people this day, the first day of a new year, as they continue to process throughout the day, as they continue to just lay their lives before you and think about what does it look like practically for me to renew my commitment to the Lord in 2023. Meet us. Lead us. We want to follow Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Tim. And uh, like Pastor Tim said, we are going to take a moment now in our service to renew our covenant with one another. And so if you're new to Grace or if you're not a covenant member yet, that's okay. I want to encourage you to read, at the very least, read along with us um, and read this commitment we've made to each other as a local church family. This is how seriously we take this. um, And there's something beautiful about making commitments together. And so we're going to read, I'm going to read this little introductory part and then We're going to, I encourage you to stand right now, wherever you are, uh, even though you may not be worshiping with, uh, in a building with the rest of your church family, you're still reciting this with your church family, um, even if it doesn't necessarily feel that way. And so I encourage you, make this commitment, and remember that others are making this commitment to you. Let's stand. I'm going to read this first part, and then we're going to read the slides together. I'll cue you to start reading. It says this, the basis of our commitment to and caring for one another is the gospel. The gospel is the great news of salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, and the finished work of Jesus Christ alone. Trusting the gospel involves actively trusting, following, and obeying Jesus in every area of life. This is what it means to be disciples of Jesus Christ. As disciples, following Jesus is not something we do alone, but together with others in a caring and committed community of a local church. Let's read together. As a disciple of Jesus Christ and member of Grace Central Coast, I will joyfully endeavor to live together with others in our church through the following commitments. I will rejoice in the grace of God in the gospel, privately and corporately, giving thanks to our Heavenly Father for the sacrifice of His Son, for the forgiveness of our sins, and for the gift of the Holy Spirit who empowers us to believe and live for the glory of God. I will seek to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ by devoting myself to the study of and obedience to scriptures and to prayer. I will seek to participate regularly in corporate worship services and in small group contexts the church provides, recognizing importance of corporate worship in Christian community in my spiritual growth. I will live together with my brothers and sisters in love, even as God has loved us, I will seek their good through relationships that promote faith, holiness, worship, sound doctrine, service to, and sharing with the surrounding community. I will, as God enables me, care for my brothers and sisters in Christ in distress, sickness, and poverty. I will seek to spread the gospel locally and globally by serving and supporting the church's ministries through regular giving of my time, talents, energy, and finances. I have read and will abide by the Grace Central Coast Declaration of Faith. I will honor and uphold marriage as a reflection of Christ's relationship with his church and, if gifted with children, endeavor to raise my children in the ways of the word of the Lord. I have read and will abide by Grace Central Coast's commitment to preserving marriages. I will pursue reconciliation when offense occurs between myself and another member. I have read and will abide by Grace Central Coast's commitment to peacemaking and reconciliation. I will 
be accountable and hold others accountable for the practice of faith and obedience to the scriptures. I have read and will abide by the Grace Central Coast commitment to accountability and church discipline. Well, thank you so much for um, standing and renewing that covenant with me, for making that covenant and those commitments to me and my family, and for holding me and our family accountable um, to keeping those commitments to you. And like I said before, uh, if you're not a covenant member yet, I hope you can see the benefits and also your call to be committed to a church community. And I encourage you, come to our covenant membership class January 28th. Um, It's something you're not going to want to miss. This really is the surface of a lot of depth of what we believe it means to be a covenant member here at Grace. And so I encourage you, check that out. Even if you just have questions, or if you want this in writing, you can email me, chris at gracecentralcoast.org, and I'd love to get that to you or answer any questions you might have. With that, we have a couple things here uh, before we close out our service today. Uh, One, we have a next step. It's this. Take 30 to 60 minutes of quiet, personal time today to build on today's message and make or renew your covenant commitments to the Lord. Bullet point specific details of what your commitment in each area will practically involve. I encourage you, this is the day, right? It's January 1. Make time today, if possible, to make this happen. With that, uh, you know, making a covenant commitment to one another, we are a family here at Grace and we have some family business. Uh, One thing I'm excited to announce is we have a new baby in the house. Uh, Wesley Seema was born to the Seemas at our North County campus a couple weeks ago, and we are celebrating with them and this adorable baby. Uh, We also wanted to let you know that Alice Anderson, another North County campus member, passed away at the age of 93 uh, this Christmas evening. And uh, I know her and her husband were very involved in the Berean Church and then part of the merge into the North County campus of Grace Central Coast. And so uh, there will be a celebration of her life on January 7th at 11 a.m. at our North County campus. I encourage you, if you know her or her family personally, or if you don't, uh, come celebrate her life with our church family um, together. With that, let's go out into our week and into our year by reading our benediction with and to each other. Let's send each other out to live and look like Jesus. From Colossians 3, it says this, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Have a great week, church.